we have to keep in mind that we are wired in ways that is designed to survive in scarcity. And when we live in a land of abundance, that completely throws everything off. And the same piece, though, and, and then the piece, you know, the other part about this was the, the article talked about how to kind of also focus on the long term benefits, because when you're talking about exercise, that's really what you're talking about, or even, you know, watching what you eat or something like that. They're talking about the long term benefits and your brain has that kind of wiring in it, too. It's not as prominent or prevalent. So, I mean, you know, like that, that part about it, like for either comment on that or just how do you yourself, you know, kind of get the motive or keep the motivation going to, to, for your walks and for your, your, your exercising in the garage and stuff. Um, vanity. Um. <laughs> hey, so I guess that, so is that an immediate payoff or is that a long-term payoff? <laughs> it's probably both. <laughs> no, I was like funny. I was laughing, thinking about like, yeah, why don't I just be honest and say, Hey, I work out because I like staying in shape and looking good. Like, I'll just be honest with that. And I'm not saying it in an arrogant way. Like, I'm so good looking. What I mean is. But uh, you, you would be worse feel, looking if you didn't work it, out. Yeah, that? it feels good to be in shape, right? And and to be able to still fit into my high school basketball jersey if I pull it out of the closet. So yeah. um, that feels good. I'm not going to lie, right? But I would say this on a serious note. Um, it's at a point for me because I've been living this way so long that it really is a lifestyle. I don't have to think about it. Um, so I'm not sitting there every morning saying, oh, I got to work out just so I can still have a, you know, a six pack or something. It's just more of, I've just conditioned my body. I eat a certain way. I exercise a certain way where if I go off that track, I just don't feel good. Yeah. Um, if I start eating uh, too much processed food and certain things, like I don't eat potato chips, I don't drink sodas, you know, things like that. So if I know if I start doing that, I mean, I literally will have a stomach ache for, you know, the whole second half of the day. I'll feel miserable and just, you know, my body just rejects that kind of stuff. So I yeah. think part of it is, but I didn't used to always be like that. I mean, I grew up eating junk food and just being a regular American kid. So um, there, there was, must've been a period of time, maybe my twenties or early thirties where I really, um, spent enough time not eating certain things that when I tried them again, um, you know, my body just didn't like it. That's one thing. And then the second thing, I don't know if this comes with more being a male or, or something, or just, you know, the athlete part of me that's still there, even as I age that same thing with movement. If I don't walk, at least walk, do something physical, almost on a daily basis. Um, again, I feel kind of jittery and fidgety, like, you know, I, and I get depressed and all that. So for me, it's really part of my lifestyle, just moving, exercise and eating right and all that. So that's, that's why I say it's a, the vanity part is fun, but the serious part is just, you know, and, and I think as I've aged, I mean, it's funny, we joke even uh, sometimes in private conversations, right? Like, I can't drink bottom shelf liquor since I turned 40, 41 <laughs> back in the day. You know, I just, I mean, I remember in college, I could drink a half a bottle of Southern Comfort and feel great the next day. <laughs> now I got to drink like the Jack Daniels single barrel, $80 bottle. And that's the only way I can wake up the next morning and function. Because if I drink bottom shelf liquor, it takes three days. And the way that I work now, which I need a lot of brain energy, I got to be on point mentally. I don't like that feeling. So then I just shy away from that kind of consuming those kind of things. And so, um, so I think all no, that, no, I mean, is what we threw a lot, you threw a lot out there. Um, <laughs> I'd say from the, from the article we did, which will be in the show notes, uh, the, the idea of the brain being able to you know, like this short term versus long term, I thought was very instructive as far as like, okay, yeah, that's the wiring that we have kind of the, the unconscious is that short term. And it's the conscious that can actually hold these long term goals. And that's a way to overcome the, the the feeling of, you know, like, oh, like your, your body is literally telling you, you know, in the unconscious part of your body, don't go to the gym. Don't do it. Don't do it. And so how do you work through that um, in a time when you it's not like you have infinite time, you know, so you got to overcome a lot of things to, to work out consistently. I'll, I'll use a different word, um, but I think you're really onto something. It's it once you become acclimated to a certain way of living, then it seems like your body does try to maintain that. And so that can work in both ways. If you're acclimated to little movement and potentially bad eating, then like you have, you almost have, you have the hunger pains. And if you try to go off of that, it that your body, there's an adjustment period. I think the reverse works as well. Cause I'm the same as you. Like if I go a couple of days without exercising, then I feel different. I feel more sluggish. I feel, I don't feel like my, feel like my brain doesn't pop as well. And so I feel like I'm acclimated to working out, exercising, whether again, whether it's hard working out or taking long walks or whatever, like I'm acclimated to that in a way that my body now expects it. 
And that's part of me maintaining kind of my, my homeostasis is being in that, in that uh, kind of mindset. And the conversion, you know, to, to piggyback on something you else, also you said, is how your body becomes more sensitive to things as you get older. Like for me, vanity is less of an issue um, as far as why I do it. It's more performance, honestly. Like I don't want to, like I want to be able to, to get out with my kids and do stuff. You know, I don't want to be, you know, hurting myself every time I go try to shoot hoops with my kids or, you know, toss a baseball or football or something like that. So, you know, I like to be able to, you know, obviously I'm not going to be able to perform the way I could at 20, but I still, I'm still at an age where I can, can do things pretty well, you know? And so I, and I like that. I like to be able to do that. And so a lot of my exercising is geared towards not looking, you know, super this or that, but also like my muscles working well and, and, and so forth. So the, the, I think that you can find motivation in different things that may, that, that may appeal to you. And that's, you know, the different things will motivate different people, but ultimately it's going to just be an uphill climb. I mean, that's what I, I took away from this is that the acclimation piece can help, um, but you're busy and then you're already, you know, your body's wired to try to, con- to, to, to conserve calories. Hey, we, the, the drought is coming, so to speak, in our bodies at all times. And so, you know, like the acclimation can help the long term goals or the, the overriding goals that you have. But ultimately, it seems like it's going to be a day to day battle for, for people in general. And, you know, like the other thing I'll say is habituating, you know, scheduling it, have it so it's part of your schedule can help. But I mean, it, it's, it's one of those things that it, it doesn't yeah. ever become like second nature, you know, like it always becomes something that it's okay, it's time to do this. Let's do it. Let's not, let's not procrastinate it. Then you, you might run out of time or whatever. So 